our strengths are confidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, oh, I. Here we go. It's back. Yep, I'm yep. lagging really bad. If you can tell. Uh oh. I know it's not it's not a D and D session without technical difficulties. Technical yeah, difficulties and dragons. <laughs> <laughs> it's the goddamn gremlins, guys. You have to go deal with them. I told you, it's the gremlins. I'm not the one who fed them after midnight. All right, it's not my job. But they look so cute. Just just wait till I figure out how to do Jersey again. Oh no. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Yeah. Are we uh we back in the air or are we yeah, still no, flat? Yeah, we're good. We should be good. All right, we're good in the air. So the attendant, uh, very well dressed, uh, young man, uh, nondescript human. Like this is the blandest human being you've ever seen. Man, <laughs> we the... are being catty. Yeah. <laughs> I am having a day. Okay. I love it. I encourage uh, it. Me. Um, wow. Anyway, uh, he, uh, he is, uh, greetings, uh, do, you know, uh, please provide your entry work. All right, I'm going to go up to him and show him the papers. All right, you present him with the papers from Fair Line. I don't know what's causing it. I don't know what the issue is. We are indeed back, though. Yeah, we are back. All right. Thank you for confirming that. Sorry for the delays and droppings. Uh, once again, uh, technical difficulties and dragons has returned. <laughs> um, we really do have to slay that dragon. <laughs> we really should take care of those gremlins. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as you wait uh, to be let in, um, a rather uh, uh, a very well-to-do uh, individual does approach the gate. Uh, he's very well dressed. He's got two or three people behind him. Uh, one is you recognize uh, as a sort of armed individual, as some sort of you know minor bodyguard. Uh, she's kind of oddly dressed for the role. Um, the other two are just attendants. But this one catches your eye uh, behind this very portly, rich person. Um, she's, uh, you know, got long white hair. Um, she's dressed kind of more like a ranger than any sort of actual, uh, guard, you know, ro you know, the sort of, you know, combat ready robes more than actual like plate armor. And, uh, what strikes you the most is that, uh, when she makes, uh, eye contact with you, she seems to just be making eye contact with anything that gets within like 10 feet of the group. Uh, her eyes, despite her otherwise very human appearance, uh, are serpentine. And uh, it just bores into you as, as they pass. And as they approach the gate, the attendant, without saying a word, just lifts the porticus and lets them through. A little bow and then lowers it again. Mm. Uh do I notice anything on their person, like a sigil, a brooch, maybe, that has, you know, maybe a family crest on it, on uh, them as they pass? Certainly. Um, please roll me a uh, perception check. I can't just use my passive. I want to roll it because you're trying to you're trying to see things. Yeah, how dare right. you try to see things? Guys, I packed up my D, D stuff even though I knew we were gonna have a session tonight oh no she has to roll on the 20 dun, I know. Dun, dun. so are you sure I can't just use my best I want to see you roll for it are you distracted by the boring snake eyes that stare into you or are you um or are you okay. quick enough to glance over them they are here very briefly 17. Oh, you want to use your passive instead? No, I'll use this. <laughs> Just tricking, trying to trick you there at the last minute. So, Thank you, Column. Um, you notice um, that uh, you notice uh, some some sigil uh, 
Uh, you know, you do notice the sigil. Um, one which I will say is fairly easy to recognize. Um, these are the the emblems uh, on all three. Uh, are the emblem of the Council of Eight. No, that's the wrong tab. Sorry. Mm. Yes, the Council of Eight uh, is what they are called. Um, that means that these people represent uh, was effectively the ruling oligarchy of um, of of Venzor and Everness. Um, they probably don't all sit on the council, but the rather large man uh, you figure probably probably does or is at least close to it. Given you know, you know the sort of you know he's overweight and dressed really fancily. <laughs> I was about to say, are we body shaming him and stereotyping? Are, are we going by Roman standards to where, like, the fatter you are, the wealthier? Like, is it that kind of world? I, I don't... It, <laughs> it, it gives the vibe. Just give, it just gives the general vibe. Um, if you would like to, um, uh, assuming you, like, share this information, anyone who would like to can uh, roll a history check to see who's in who to see uh, if they know anything about the Council of Eight or who this might be. Yeah, sure. I'll relay it. Yeah. Just to... Just I'll do my own history check. I yeah. know nothing. Okay, yeah. I got a seven. Yeah. Five. <laughs> I know less than you. Oh my god! Woohoo! No, I'll nothing. give it a shot. Yep. Ironically, he rolled better on the dice than you <laughs> Yeah, that is <laughs> well, sad. Three plus five versus three plus Yeah, five. I got uh, yeah, yeah, nine. Physical dice for the win. Uh all right, with a nine. That is the sigil of the Council of Eight. They are very important and you probably shouldn't mess with them. <laughs> That's about all you know. <laughs> We're oh, so God. smart. We're all insiders. <laughs> about Woo. yeah, about ten minutes later, um, an archivist <laughs> uh comes uh to get you. Where's Torin when you need him? Oh, while we're waiting, uh, can I just like play with uh Rune? Certainly, you can play with your pet bat. The attendant yeah. remains completely unfazed. Uh, by well, anything he's such that a happens. cool bat. The man does not move. This is like it's like this is like Buckingham Palace rules, apparently. Oh damn! So they don't move oh, unless the voice of Bart Simpson is there. I remember. Which that's a true story. Nancy Cartwright got the guards to break by doing Bart's voice. <laughs> that's hilarious. So many horrible things. Oh, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, in my medieval cowl here, um, you are. Uh, event the d gate is open for you, and you see a um, elderly halfling woman uh, approach, uh, dressed in uh, simple robes uh, that are very well kept, um, and uh, she will lead you to the archivist's uh, room. As you pass uh, through the chancellery, uh, there are a number of statues and gardens, and just sort of. You know, this is a very palace-like open feeling in it. Very, you know, Renaissance Italian palace. There's just, you know, fake colonnades and plants. It's, it's very much a testament to living things deep within the city. Interesting. Um, you are led through a number of, you know, squares and little plazas, as there is basically a small, you know, sort of Vatican City living in here, uh, dedicated entirely to the governance of... Uh, of Everness and Venzor. That's uh, foreboding. Yeah. You are led... Uh, shut up, I'm Catholic. Everything's fine. Everything's There's no fine. hidden secrets not, in the... I'm not one of you. That's <laughs> <laughs> not... That's not the day oh, I horrible. was making. That's my religion. <laughs> There's me in the corner. There's me in the spot. Like Who's got more dark secrets? Religion. Us evens or the, the papal archives? Let's go. Shush. I was just saying that like Ask the, the whole Mormon. inner city dedicated to the governance of something sounds a little sus. I didn't mean to make it specifically about Catholic people. There, there, is, there is no there, there is no war in Vatican City. <laughs> there is no war. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and there's also no Mormons in the Vatican City anymore. Anymore. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from that statement with absolutely no context, uh, as you're led to uh, a series of steps sort of tunneling down um, into, uh, into the ground, uh, you pass a very large statue that catches your eye. Because unlike most of the other statuary, it doesn't depict one or perhaps even two figures uh, with maybe a surrounding relief. No, this statue uh, is massive. It contains no less than, I believe, six, uh, than seven individuals. Um, the inscription below reads the Hydra of Syrax. That is also foreboding. Um, out here, uh, if you, if you stop, you can take a closer look at the stat, at the statuary. It is quite, it is quite massive and takes up a good chunk of the center of this courtyard. It's almost, you know, um, you know around. <clears throat> can I stop and, um, uh, ask the archivist being like, well, um, what, uh, what is this statue, uh, about? Um, the Hydra of, I completely forgot what you said. Syrax. 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 Not um, the Hydra of Syntax. <laughs> Got these word crimes. <laughs> don't, don't get me started on that. <laughs> Syntax error. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it, this Hydra of uh, Syrax, um, wh what is this? Um, I'm, I'm so curious. It, it seems so stately and impressive. So, yeah, uh, you, you know, she says, she says, oh, that. Long before my time, back, back long ago, most of these statues come from there anyway. Uh, uh these were the... These were the greatest, uh, the greatest champions in all of, uh, of the entire isle, uh, gathered together by, uh, the late king, uh, to, um, tame the land and help reshape it into the haven we live in today. Um, they were, uh, far away the greatest, uh, warriors and mages of their era, perhaps of all Venzor, some say, but who can really tell? They, uh, uh, one day they just, uh, all up and died. <laughs> no, no one quite knows the full reason, but, uh, one day they were there and the next, they just weren't. What, uh, what exactly do you mean by taming the land? Did they fall I thought the there was nothing there? before... Um, the Ascended Nine came to Venzor. Alright, there wasn't, but the wilderness is not entirely hospitable to all folk. Farms must be built, granaries, houses, roads. There must always be the matters of public security. Bandits thinking to make a quicker and easier life in the woods. And, you know, there are natural hazards, too, in the, the land such as this. Nature itself is not simply an idle force. You're quite right about that. Um, you know, nature hey. nature is not really meant to be tamed, but I don't know why so many of these seven would have to be warriors if it... Oh, God. Hold on. I'm losing my accent. Um... So many of these warriors would have to be. <laughs> so many of these seven would have to be warriors. Um, wouldn't most of them be agriculturalists or clerics or things like that, um, in order to help the people? It, it it just seems quite fascinating to me. Well, I can't really say too much, but Venzor is a very. Uh large isle, as I'm sure you've noted, uh, several uh, variations in biomes and topography and the people who choose to go out there. But um, 
Suffice to say, they were all recruited from the top of their field. Take, uh, for example, uh, this one is a personal favorite of mine, uh, Mother Ethel, and she uh, gestures to a uh, uh, a satyr uh, who appears to be some sort of druid. Um, it is a uh, she is dressed in gothic attire, uh, tall, slender, with black horns and a crop top. Easily the smallest member, or I'm sorry, easily the tallest member of the uh, of the high of the Hydra of Serax. She sounds um, badass. Um, yes, uh, she is. Uh, she was. Uh, uh, she was a moon druid uh, and founded the four covens of Calchect Forest. Her inclusion on the Hydra meant that well. The forests answer to Evernus and to Cyrax. Though there is no more Cyrax, as I'm sure you have gathered. Yes. Having come um, this far. Would you mind telling me about the other ones be before we head to the archives? Uh, certainly. Uh, in, uh, in front of her is Cordian Dacius. The first, he was the first man to ever set foot on Venzor, and uh, for that accomplishment, it was decreed by the gods themselves that uh, the first settlements be named after him, and thus the port of uh, all Venzor is called Dasos. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, not an overly remarkable man. Uh, he is a human warrior of average height and build. Um... He is holding a sword and shield that look very similar to some the party have. Uh, <laughs> the hilt of his sword is the same as the hilt of, of Robin's dagger. Um, and the shield, I believe, is currently on Torin, uh, at somewhere. But yes, uh, you, you do have some of his relics. Um, he was a, uh, he was a knight and a paladin of, uh, of you are a, a truly impressive warrior. Uh, besides him is the uh, gnomish wizard Don John Zaman. Uh, Don John. Yeah, he is the he yeah he is the father of chronergy magic on Venzor. Uh, he was a uh, he's a male gnome with a classic wizard's beard in a black sort of traditional wizard's gown with a little hat. Oh no! With, you know, cross between the gnome hat and the pointy wizard hat. Um, he's, he was arguably, uh, the most powerful of the mages, uh, of the founding of Venzor. Um, time itself could be reworked by his hand, so, you know, major mistakes could be undone, disasters averted. Wait a mm. second. This man could rewrite time itself. Can I look over at, like, Amazing. Robin and go, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Yes, I am listening to the nice woman. Be quiet, frog child. Oh, yep. Yep. Next is, um, next up, uh, she points to Meekless the Small. Uh, it's a diminutive female Kenku crow who is just beaming. She's the only one on there who doesn't have some sort of expression of, like, austerity, seriousness, or, like, you know, the cold stone stare in their demeanor. Mm -hmm. This one is just super cheerful <laughs> compared to the rest. Baby! Very happy. Very happy. Uh, she's beaming beneath a tight green cowl. Um, she was the father, the founder of Ansdurth, uh, carved into the mountains. Uh, now the gateway that keeps uh, all the exiled criminals out of uh, our fair lands. Uh, she is... Uh, said to be the great-great-granddaughter of the god Keramikos's niece. Um, on the uh, pedestal, she is a little over four feet tall. Um, to, so, so you some... turned Gwen into a, into a character here. Ouch. <laughs> no, I did not. I no, am 5'2", I... and that is so not my no, personality. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I did not. One, it's not her personality. Two, um... Sorry, nice comment. The uh, two Meekless is much taller. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. You want to fight? You want to fight? I'm I several not hours away, me. and I'm pretty sure you can't arrange for a ride right now. <laughs> ho ho ho! I can't, but I'm visiting my grandparents soon. I will fight. 
I will pay for that Uber just to knock your knees out. <laughs> Do it. Oh, you're going for a high jump kick there. <laughs> you talk as shit, it is gonna come back to bite you. It, now, is this is this considered a hate related uh, height related hate crime? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, you know. Anyway, um. It's not a hate crime if I get rid of the body. I. I I think uh, they next, tried that before. I don't know if that worked. Next, uh, ne next is a uh, dragonborn uh, paladin uh, who the uh, old woman identifies as as Soren of Thawne, the founder of Andropolis, uh, the great military uh, garrison on the uh, western edge of the Bay of Black. Um, you see a... What is a... Husky Ravenite Dragonborn, so there's no tail uh, on him, uh, whose body incorporates uh, silver scales uh, onto the ridges and bone structures of a green Dragonborn. So he looks like some sort of hybrid between a silver and a green Dragonborn. Um, you know, uh, it is said that uh, it is said that Soren. Uh, chose to uh for to forego his original so, uh, surname in favor of that of the ship on which he was born during the crossing uh Ooh. as a method of honoring it uh, although and she kind of gives like a very uh insidious little wink like you know dark secret it was uh it was rumored that he was really chosen because he was the uh illegitimate son of Cyrax Ooh. But, uh, that is, is a very, uh, that is a very, uh, Robin very, winks uh, back at her. It's very, uh, oh, oh gosh. The, the last two are Tyrell Tunder, a human wizard, uh, who founded, uh, one of the less reputable of the group. Uh, he founded the Order of the Mauta and established the Tower of Turth for its practice in the Tywerd Earth. Uh, he's a master necromancer. Uh, the dead itself uh, uh, bent were bent to his will. Uh, you see a bald, imposing, dark-skinned uh, man in the robes of the Red Wizards of Fey, a uh, a uh, which is a lich kingdom uh, in the Forgotten Realms of Faerun. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, very uh, very dark and dangerous. Um, to say, I've had know, some quite yeah. some nasty um, news about that tower and what goes on there. It is, it is quite unfortunate how his practice has turned, but uh, in his day, the new island brought a great many new ailments. Diseases were rampant, things, you know, we had not seen before, and his power of life and death helped great many cures and medicines used by our clerics today. Wow, how fascinating. And finally, we come to the last of them, a uh, strange one. <laughs> yeah, you see before you a Githyanki uh, maid. Uh, he's a warrior maid. He's lithe, yellow-skinned, uh, with long, dark tendrils for hair. Um, his gaze is somewhat um, distant. Um, you've ever seen an esper, how it just has the thousand-yard stare like it has seen shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Constantly. Um, it's kind of like that in his, you know, sort of very deep sunken face. Um, he, uh, this was the, uh, he was the first man to discover uh, Garen's well, and uh, in the process, he quite earned his name. Uh, no one was more efficient and more, or more brutal in uh, the exploration and taming of this land probably why he was uh, the first to find that uh, well old wellspring though it is uh, of course not on the maps and is forbidden to go there for it is a very dangerous tidal spring uh, now, why people... why is it dangerous um I, I haven't heard of this uh, well before uh, many people who have uh, tried to go there have uh, have died the tides uh are not a thing that are very often present here in Benzor. Uh, there is, after all, no moon. However, however, the 
the tunnels regularly flood and recede. And when you are several miles underground, and that suddenly becomes several miles underwater, I well, see. most people don't come out of that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. And, uh, it is why it is there. It is a, it is a quite a remarkable uh, geophysical phenomenon, and his ability to cut through the wilderness was uh, greatly needed at a time when you know there were no roads. <laughs> uh, they uh, were bounded together under uh, Cyrax King and. Uh, were made to, uh, were sent to sort of unify the island and enact his will as, you know, sort of, you know, his eyes and ears in the field, you know, a single elite unit, as you were, as it were. Mm -hmm. Warriors, scholars, mages, all of them. Were, uh, they were uh, quite the, uh, group, as I am, as I am told. And so the reason they came together was the, the taming of the island to make it more hospitable um, for the people to be here. Did it mention anything else? Uh, maybe the history books or, or anything? Like about... any indigenous populations? <laughs> oh no, dear. Nothing lived here before, uh, before the gods found it uh, in the Great Crossing. Can I uh, press X for doubt? Well... <laughs> Roll an insight check against this woman. Can I roll insight too? Sure. I feel like because we have found ruins that are older, so. Fifteen. She's not lying. <laughs> that was so me. To her, to her knowledge, she is telling us the truth. Yeah. Oh wait. This yeah. your fifteen. You what did 11. I get? Eleven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Eleven and fifteen. I'll, this I'll woman is it. not. This woman is not lying to you. Hmm. I still find that hard to believe that there was nothing right. here. Maybe she just doesn't know. Yeah, yeah I got to say, guys, sorry. Yeah. M maybe it's possible she doesn't know. It's possible that's the truth. You did find some ruins that were too old to be here. Um, You also found a jar with a talking man. So <laughs> there's some weird shit on this island. <laughs> yeah, this definitely isn't like Kansas anymore. Uh, they could be pulling in America. None of us were in Kansas. They, just, they, uh, just moved. The, the only uh, the only other thing is uh, that is really well known is that you know they were brought together by the King Cyrax. Mm -hmm. Um, that's you know that's kind of the other real point. You know, it's like you know this place didn't used to be as uh, orderly as it was is most of what you gather. Mm -hmm. Um. It, right, it is, interesting. Uh, yeah. If there's anything else you are sort of led down into the archives um, and are uh, sort of like, you know, you are presented with a, uh, a single stone. Uh, return this to a little box at the entrance when you are done. Uh, if you have queries, uh, simply speak it into the stone uh, and someone will respond. Uh, Please, do, if anything is removed, please place it onto a cart. Do not attempt to put it back yourself. Um, all lights in here are magical. There will be no flames, uh, as you can understand. Uh, of course, of course. Good luck with the uh, papers and the crystals uh, for whatever it is you need to do. And she just sort of walks off. You know, uh, you gotta, her job wasn't so much to like you know supervise you here, but to make sure you didn't wander into a different part of the government buildings, like. It's like, hey, I'm going to go walk into the Pentagon now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, um, is that going JFK? Right. Yep. I'm going to call at it. Thank you. Um, as she's yeah. leaving. <laughs> I'm going to go back to her nap or whatever it is she does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am going to, uh, Robin is going to turn around and go, righty, let's get started. Um, and it's going to go, uh, obviously there are not computers here. Holy crap. How do people search index before computers? The index books. Rock. You would literally have to go through the There's index. There's literally a filing cabinet with a list of things that says A, B, C, D, E, yeah. F, G. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to remember <laughs> if there would be like a filing cabinet or if there's like, like books that you take out to look through. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to go to the filing cabinet. Uh, is anything, like, magical about it? Or do I just old-fashioned look mm -hmm. through stuff? Uh, so That's there the is rock. a... Uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, sort of a scroll that's just sort of been left open and dangling. The bot there's no like bottom part to roll it in on. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of the paper's just dangling in there. Um, mm -hmm. It seems to have been placed for uh, for some sort of inventory like purpose. Uh, it is, however, blank. Alrighty. Uh, well, I'm just going to attempt magic. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to. Uh, pick up the scroll, face it, and say, um, show me all documents related to water systems in the Kelchek forest. Mm. Uh, you, uh, the scroll takes a, uh, you know, takes a moment, uh, and, like, you kind of hold your breath, like, I'm just, I just talked to a roll of toilet paper, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I really hope then, I didn't do that. And then there's sort of a Ding, 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 ding. Uh, almost little flicker of light uh, bouncing off of each corner of the uh, various like just honeycomb stacks of scrolls and books mm -hmm. and uh, you can see now lit up uh, are highlighted um, two different sets of words across like these dozens and dozens of stacks just sort of going back mm -hmm. okay, everything that says cow checked uh, all the sh all the shelves that have that written on them are highlight are now like glowing, sort of this you know orangish glow, and mm -hmm. everything that is uh, related to water management isn't nearly as much probably because it's you know hard to do is like there's also water management is highlighted, you know sort of doing okay. that faint glow. <laughs> okay, are they cross checked or are they just different um, things highlighted? It, it does not appear to be cross checked. Unfortunately, it seems to be. The way this system works is it will tell you wherever a word appears. Okay. On the uh, on the sorting system. So if you're looking for Calcheck, everything that says that has every filing, uh, you know, sort of like wall of uh, documents that ha that is labeled as being a part of Calcheck is you know glows. So there's not like a magical index. It's just yeah. telling me that they're there. It's just, so it, it, yeah, it's just telling me that like. Shelf two hundred three is 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 cow checked. Is basically what's telling you. Mm. Is it tells you which shelf has the it, it relates to the subject you are looking for. I can't get like a descriptive inventory. Okay, got it. Yeah, um, you no, know, it's it's sort of like you gather. You're probably gonna have to dig through the archives. Yay! Yay. Okay, um, and yeah. then I'm going to uh, hold up the scroll and be like, oh, can I also have documents related to the city of Lyme? Because that's also what we're looking at. City of Lyme. Uh, Lyme now lights up as well. Okay. Uh, several more uh, stacks near. It's, this place is, as you see some of the lights go off, you know, some of them are a little distant. You can kind of see, like, you know, there's a little yellow, like, crystal at the top of them. That kind of lets you guide yourself to them from afar, and then mm. you can see when you get there which word is highlighted. Okay. Um, are I'm gonna look around. Is there any um, like parchment and ink or anything, or maybe parchment and like graphite? Uh, none around you immediately. No. Um, none. Okay. Place is very large. Uh, you gather this is meant for like research and reading, rather than it is for like you know writing things down and new stuff okay yeah um do i have any I w i'm a wizard i feel like i would have parchments and like a quill on me you probably Hold do it at some point. it's easy enough to just say you write something down cool all right we're gonna do that. i have a scholar's pack of course cool. i do yeah, um yeah, you have a scholar's pack like also, unless it's, like, the ink and paper for, like, I want to record this spell scroll, I'm not going to make you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I just try to follow rules. Uh, all right. Uh, it's good, yeah. I'm just, yeah. Just like how I don't make Aaron roleplay eating breakfast every morning. <laughs> Which I really think you should. I think you should torture him for that. Uh, so I... um. I'm going to, uh, Robin is going to turn to, um, 
Rockchild and Gareth and go, Well, we're gonna get started. It's gonna be a long day. Let's go grab all these materials and cross check and reference them for anything that we can find in mysterious appearances in the Calcheck Forest, any waterways and disturbances. It's gonna be a lot of reading. Um, and uh. then. Yeah, they're just kind of going to direct a little bit so that we can get through these documents. Do I role play like an investigation? So, so what uh, question, you can... Robin? Yeah, what go ahead. What language are all the documents in? Because I'm, liter liter I'm only literate in a couple of languages. Well, Rockchild, I obviously do not know that because I have not looked at the documents yet oh, you, 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 but <laughs> i think we i think we'll be able to figure it out yeah so you you, you might have to do some searching uh so mechanically how this is going to work is uh you guys can tell me a term you would like to have looked at and then you can roll a investigation or a history check uh to sort of search through and read whatever's in that section okay yeah all right so so far, the words line, cow checked, and water systems have been selected. I also, I don't know if you remember from last session what I wanted to research. Uh, you wanted uh, to research kobolds? Yeah, the kobolds, the history of kobolds. kobolds. Yeah, yeah. If you'd like to, you can tell kobolds, uh, you can tell the scroll kobolds, and kobolds will light up. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold the scroll out and I'll be like. Can you also show me anything related to kobolds? And then I'm going to put the scroll down and be like, all right, now we're going to go look at everything. Right, so I, had, I had a thing, too, I wanted to look for. What do you <laughs> want to look for? Religion and heresy. All right, I pick the scroll back up. I open the scroll. <laughs> also, can you show me anything, anything, anything related to religion and heresy? 42,000 assume... relevant articles located. <laughs> now I put the scroll down. Hey, no, you need to go look at everything. All right, hang on, just one second. Yes. I feel like we just, we just oh, like oh. made the work 10 times crazier. Right. I just imagine it's a Google search with like 400,000 pages you could click through. All right, All right pick a word. So... Pick a word. Cobalt. Everyone pick a word and give me a roll. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do cow check. All right. And I will do history. I got a 17. All right. I will do... I'll do heresy. I'll do an investigation check. Yeah. Oh, okay. Flat 17, too. All right. Nice. So, we got two so we got 17 for heresy, 17 for cow checked, and... Uh, Justin, what do we have for Rock Child? <laughs> what what did you you have to say what you picked? I I, I went for Cobold, so yeah. Negative. Nat Nat one. Nat one. All right, All right. so Robin, you yes. got a seventeen to research cow check. There are quite a few um document files for um for cow check. Uh, most of it your wizardly brain is quickly able to dismiss as like you know annual records things about rainfall you know who the premier you know which premier was elected you know things like that you know you you know just basic record keeping um mm -hmm. is a lot of it um however uh you know you know you know there's just sort of a lot of that like sort of basic record keeping a lot of it kind of relates to line a lot of the times, uh, and issues uh, between Line and the four covens in the forest, and you know, traces of their activities and things. However, mm -hmm. with your seventeen, um, you kind of dig around a little bit, and sort of behind some you know other scrolls and things, you come across a blue crystal about the size, about maybe twice the size of a human head. It's uh, oddly hey. shaped, and it's just sitting there, and it's the strangest thing. Um, most of the information is irrelevant, but you do find this blue crystal uh, back there. Can I investigate the blue crystal? 
Uh, it's, just, it's right in front of you. Uh, do you do anything with it? You can you can like look it over. It's yeah. Just sort of um... like, it, 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 I'm basically telling you like most of it is just basic record keeping. Okay. That isn't very useful, but there is this weird crystal thing. Okay, hold on. Uh, that is not how you spell that. So is it too late to admit that I'm illiterate? <laughs> <laughs> you you can just make that part of the the role to work it into your character. You can't. You're illiterate. You can't understand this stuff. Um, I am going to investigate the blue crystal. I'm gonna look it over. Um, maybe do an Arcana check over it to see why this might be important enough to be in the archives. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Like it doesn't appear to contain any information. Okay, do you want me to roll Investigation first or Arcana first? Uh, I'd say roll Arcana. Um, probably okay. be easiest, because, like, you've already found the thing. That is <laughs> fair. 21! You are very excited, <laughs> because you see it, and you look at it, and it dawns on you that what this is. This is a, is a, uh, this is a memory node. Uh, you can, uh, a person can pick one up and wielding it, they can r sort of relive the direct recollections of another individual. <laughs> yes, you how do I do this? You can send people on this. a trauma trip. <laughs> Yeah. Right, that's what we're really uh, thinking. There, uh, with your twenty-one, you do know that they're uh, that they were banned uh, in your uh, in your home uh, society on account of several instances of people poisoning these things with, you know, basically recollections of like PTSD. Put and then you know you know basically swapping the crystal out for one that had a very traumatic event, and then you know the user's mind being unprepared getting blasted with severe psychic damage and killing them. So don't make my own memory node is what you're saying. You Got could it. make a trauma bomb, quite literally a trauma bomb. No. You just Did, yeah. Trauma dump the, uh, on anyone who wields the, it. The user chooses what memories go into it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people can tamper with them, but like, you know, usually it's, you know, whatever memory, whatever experience you choose goes into it, the fresher the memory is, mm -hmm. the clearer it becomes. You can also add to it more later. Like, you know, you record one, you know, it can be like basically a living diary of your life. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, I am the going to be... <laughs> the, the memory crystal of the wimpy kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> the memory I love crystal how you... Of, no. I love how you guys have like that thing, and the first thing I'm thinking of is memory. It's so easy to leave. Like that's <laughs> if Cats the Musical existed in this world, that is exactly what Robin would be singing right now. Can I roll to make that real? We made North Korea real in the last campaign. <laughs> yeah. You like, what? You yeah, are like, that was. We are not. We are not revisiting. We are not revisiting the things that you did last time. I'm, you I'm did it, saying, you made it real. I'm just saying, if we can make a whole country real, can we not just make the cat? I get shouted down for having French yes. craftsmanship on chairs, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, not inventing musical. Um, so the musical cats exist, it. but it has only ever been performed by the cats of holding. <laughs> yes! Right. I oh, would that's... like, Interesting that the main uh, Robin knows this as the performance happened in the Feywild and they were yes. able to see it. Yeah, it's just, what do you do with the crystal? Okay, uh, I am going to attempt to um, use the crystal and relive uh, these recollections. All right, Robin is going to pick up the crystal uh, and we're going to get into what goes in that crystal in just a second because we've got other roles to resolve. That's it. Gareth. You rolled a 17 to investigate heresy, uh, I believe. Um, with that 17, um, most of the documents you come across are 
standard dry theological treatises on the nature of sin and on, you know, some comparative works regarding how one, what one religion views as extremely taboo is not so considered by another religion, uh, things like that, you know, as most of the stuff is just, you know, academic scholarly work on the nature of heresy. Um, as uh, you begin to gather steadily that they probably wouldn't publish and post their own, like, works antithetical to their own theocracy. <laughs> uh, too much uh, down here. However, with your 17, uh, under heresy, you come across a, uh, a small written work, um, maybe a few dozen pages, uh, kind of tucked away, um, written by a man whose name you recently heard, Chauvin the Cruel. There is a small, uh, uh, small treatise, uh, called the Anti-Eldrian, <laughs> where he are, where he sort of, as, uh, you know, as you gather, there's been several generations, uh, crossing, you know, the, you know, astral sea to get to Venzor at this time. You know, this is post-arrival. He sort of goes out on a limb and, you know, more or less to commit political suicide at this point. Uh, to I'm fr I'm freezing, guys. Sorry. Uh, to basically argue that the gods um, may not that we that the people of Venzor don't really need them. That maybe these gods aren't as benevolent or as necessary as people believe, and that a lot of the reverence we have comes from basically being trapped on a boat at the mercy of their whims and protection. Uh, ba basically, he accuses the Ascendant Nine of committing Stockholm Syndrome against uh, the entire population of Venzor. We rescued you. You are safe here. <laughs> wait a minute. Like, like Beauty and the Beast style Stockholm Syndrome. I'm thinking, wait, Dr. wait, Who hold on. When they lived on the ship. No, I'm thinking um, uh, the Gnostics, the Gnosticism where, like, apparently Old Testament God is the bad God, and we've all just been um we've all been tricked to thinking that the evil god is actually the good god of our realm mm. but the actual good god exists in another realm that just that kind of reminds me of that yeah B basically basically his two main arguments against the gods is that number 1 they were people once they continue to behave and act like people Meaning that if people are selfish, flawed, and fallible, so too are these gods that we are, you know, basically following blindly. Number two is that these gods were once people, and they achieved immortality. Yet the rest of us are forced to suffer and die from disease, from hunger, from conflict, from just the ravages of old age. These people are youthful and immortal. And they have declined to share that secret with anyone. <coughs> and it's, you know, one is, and so basically he accuses them of, you know, forging their own, you know, personal empire. So what's the history of the name with the name of it? Like, is there any connection there? The, uh, it is the anti-Eldrian, um, El yeah, uh, the anti-Eldrian, um, Eldris is the god of chaos and considered the most selfish of all the gods, uh, <laughs> thus made a perfectly good, like, you know, target for him to fire. If he was going to shoot at any one of the nine, <coughs> Eldris is the most motivated by, you know, himself as the god of chaos. <laughs> um... Also, it is, his name. it is it is it uh, is believed by a number of uh, scholars that, you know, sort of you know, in that order that the statues were in the temple is the order in which the gods came together. You notice Eldris is immediately to the left of the entrance, meaning he was the first one, which uh, can be kind of a doozy. 
Oh, the, the contradiction of a man. <laughs> yeah. The duality. Yeah. But basically, that's that. That's his, That's the whole thing in uh, Paris. <coughs> Under kobolds, um, there is biological references to like their eating habits, their you know general societies. There, there's there's some very basic references. However, you don't really get a chance to uh, explore that because you kind of take your foot up on one of the notches to kind of reach for some of that stuff, oh, and. No. Uh, you all are interrupted by the shelf coming crashing down on him. Oh, come on. Uh, you take seven points of bludgeoning damage. Seven points? Yeah, I rolled really high. It was one d eight plus zero. You couldn't just let me be illiterate, like <clears throat> get to the scroll, uh, finally you look down and go, "Oh, I yeah. can't read." Yeah. No, that one means you take damage. I'm sorry, yeah. that's just the yeah. rule. <laughs> Robin. You hear a thunderous crash, but before you can turn your head to look away, <laughs> uh, you feel almost like you are pulled into the crystal. What is visibly happening to anyone looking in on the outside is basically Robin is just staring with a thousand yard stare into this blue, big blue gem, and it is swirling sort of like misty quartz on the inside, which it wasn't doing before. Robin, and you I feel, just have feel, Rune just on the top of my head, just tittering. What you feel happen is you feel yourself pulled into the crystal as if the crystal has now enveloped you <laughs> and uh, pulled out. You, Robin, now stand uh, oh, well over six feet tall. Ooh, uh, living the high life, are, literally. You are slender. Um, you are not very uh, heavily dressed. You can feel uh, horns on your head and hooves on your feet. Yes. Um, I'm a crop top goth goddess. Yeah. You, know, you are. You you have a um, you have a you have a memory uh, crystal of of Mother Ethel. Uh, the forest is thick and dark around you. Um, and as you step, uh, sort as you step forward, the branches of the trees curl away from you. Uh, and uh, part. And after a few after a few moments, you step out into a blindingly sunlit uh, clearing. Uh, there are there is uh, what would have been once a massive tree at the center of this. Now a stump, maybe a stump about 12, 18 feet across. Damn. Uh, you approach this. Yeah. Can I understand the thoughts within her memories or just like what's happening around her? You are basically witnessing their perceptions. Um, you might gather, okay. in a, at most you'll gather a sort of empathic emotional state, sort of how they per, okay. how they perceive the event, but you will not gather any internal uh, dialogue. The, the power of these gems is, you know, only so much. <laughs> okay. That's just something I wanted to clarify. You can continue. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, you see three uh, other individuals um, standing at sort of, you know, ninety degree angles on the stump, mm -hmm. uh, and you approach on the fourth. Uh, these are uh, you can see them fairly clearly. Uh, these are the other. Uh, these are the these are the covenant, um, the, these are the covenant mothers, uh, basically. Uh, there are three other women. Um, each one is dressed very uh, differently. One is uh, a old human, long, uh, curled white hair, uh, sort of raven head, gold staff, um, completely blind and hunched over. <laughs> um. Uh, another one appears to be a small child in pigtails. Um, I know uh, what you're doing. I love this it. This one but... is just unnaturally childlike and young. Um, and is basically the little Salem witch girl. <laughs> yes. Um, the maiden, the mother, the crone. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the third one uh, is um, 
Uh, the third one is very elven looking, uh, short, uh, parted blonde hair. Uh, her whole nature just glows with a false emanation. Just not, not, not even like fey unnatural beauty, but sort of like I'm wearing, I'm something ugly, twisted and dark, and I'm wearing the skin of something, uh, nice and fun and, you know, it sort of gives this little, you know, echoing laughter as uh, as Ethel approaches, and Eth and you get the Ethel just Aww, ignores it, like my like, mother, just just sort of a gritting teeth, like just you, uh, just like shut up, <laughs> you, like like a, like whatever's coming from this one, Ethel knows it's nothing good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you see them, uh, you see them gather. No words are spoken. Um, for a solid like minutes they just sort of all stare each other down and you get the strange sense that a vote is being taken and one by one um the trees or the grass or the wind something rolls behind each of the each of the other three and they just sort of one by one each one just sort of nods their head and at last your head nods there is darkness in our forests. Uh, you hear the voice coming from your own mouth. Mm. And it must remain contained. None must traverse here. And none must find what, the, what cruelty has brought forth. We are in accordance and all is one, and then all three repeat, and all is one. So the four covens shall guard, four covens shall keep, from this day to the last day, in all our posterity. And then there is a sharp sense of pain, pain as you cut to the bone on your hand with a knife you didn't even realize you were holding. All uh, the other three mothers do the same, and the blood floats and swirls and begins to form rings in the lines of this giant tree and spirals and the blood just sort of overlaps to make this complex geometric spiral and you are pushed from the tree as it reforms this fully grown massive tree the waypoint is set. Let none who seek it traverse further. Let none who seek it traverse further. And the meeting is dissolved. There is uh, another image, sort of an aftershock, almost like this is you know, almost like, you know, like an earthquake, just something extra jiggled in there at the last second. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of glance back at the tree and you can sort of feel a little, little brief flash, uh, a hole in the ground, and black water rising uh, almost as a geyser uh, coming forth, like just bursting apart the tree from within. And uh, there's one last word. Uh, so it is never enough. And uh, you are brought back uh, to reality. Um, as I presume Gareth is uh, unwedging rock child from the from the wall. Oh, back to reality. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the <laughs> gravity. Um, yeah. Robin, you have returned to us. Alrighty. Uh, so I'm going to just take a moment to take it in. Um, I'm going to set the crystal back where I found it. Because I assume I haven't, like, moved from... No, you have, you have not moved. It just sort of... It feels weird being seeing things at your height. Like you almost feel like you remember 
reaching down to put this thing down and now you kind of got to reach up a little bit and it just feels wrong like yeah. was it this shelf what what the, it feels like it should but there's no shelf there <laughs> yeah so i'm like uh, i'm kind of like adjusting um yeah yeah to the sun loss of about four and a half feet <laughs> hey, 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 I'm two feet tall okay um, probably more I like, mother, like I believe half. Mother Ethel. I believe Mother Ethel caps out at uh, seven something. I thought you said six something. No, sorry. She's, is she six something? I, I, I'm, I'm gonna have a bunch of lag trying to bring it back up, but I can check how tall I made her. Because there is the, because uh, she is taller than, uh, than the Dragonborn, who is beefy as all frick. I could be wrong. Um, wrong too. But, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to go walk over to where I heard the crash. Um, just trying, just trying to... to pull Rock Child out. I'm going to yeah. kind of, like, lean over into the hallway and be like, so, uh, I kind of thought this went without saying, but, um, don't break anything here. Don't also, I think I found something rather important. <laughs> Don't worry, the only thing I broke was my arm. <laughs> so I'm just pinned. Okay. <laughs> Robin's just like, all right, this is par for the course. Wait, um, is it the arm I'm pulling on? Probably, yeah. That would be hilarious. <laughs> um, and Robin is going to come up and very, like, quickly, uh, and a very, like, um, a bit overwhelmed um, state talking about what they found. And they're going to be talking very quickly, being like, so I found this, um, what is it? So I found this memory node, and so it, it, this allows you to, like, relive re recollections of a certain person, and when I found it, it was actually the, the, the mother Ethel, and that there was all these, like, coven heads, and then there's, and she's, or they're just gonna go, like, really, really quickly, um, and trying to explain what they found um, while searching for a Kelchek, and then when they, when they finish, they're gonna like halt, stop very quickly, and just stare at you, being like, "Yes, you got all of that, right? What do we think?" Who gave the child coffee again? I have not had any coffee today, I believe, and they're very like succinctly talking. Right. Repeat that again after we get him out. Well, you still stuck. Yes. It's easy enough to free him. Just free him. <laughs> I'm not gonna make your roll to pull him out of the out of the mess he's made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My arm just tears it off. Yeah. I'm gonna start grabbing books to put on the carts so that the shelf can be refixed, and I'm going to go into the stone. I'm gonna pull the stone out and go. So, um. One of my companions accidentally broke a shelf. I don't think any documents were destroyed, but could you send someone to uh, to fix that? So and sorry. Be, um, and then I'm going to put the rock back in my pocket and be like, hopefully mm, someone's mm, coming. Mm, mm, mm. Clean up in <laughs> aisle <a> four. Reply. <laughs> Our friend, uh, breaker, breaker, uh. Breaker, breaker, the fuck did you just say? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, grocery please, to but, aisle yeah. three, please. Grocery yeah. to aisle three. Yeah. But uh, I, I am going party. to reiterate what I said slightly slower, but still fast talking as I'm like gesturing for you to come along with me um, so that I can um, sit down at one of the the desks or, or reading areas and write down everything um that just happened so that i have it on paper mm -hmm. okay so who is mother ethel again uh she do you remember the stone oh wait are you asking robin or are yeah, you I'm asking, asking robin Indian? okay <laughs> um yeah I, I just wanted to make sure um so robin is going to go do you not remember? We, we walked in, there was a whole statue. She was the one with, like, the horns, and she looked really cool. And uh, she was the druid, and she helped to, like, form the covens, and she was in charge of the forest, you know. Her oh, being pretty and good up lady. there was, you know, the, the forest retained by Evan, all, all of that shit. And so they're, like, writing this as they're expecting, you should know this by now, da da da, da. 
Oh, the pretty goat lady. Got it. Well, yeah, the pretty goat lady. I was her in these recollections. And, like, Robin is just, like, incredibly excited and trying to, like, geek out over this really cool, like, magical tool, but also this, like, history and actual, like, information that we're learning. Um, Where's the crystal? I want to go touch it. No. Try to look at it. I want to touch the crystal. No. No. Um, uh, Touch. You don't know where it is, though. <laughs> uh, so, write down, and then Robin's going to be like, so the really, 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 really important thing that we need to understand is that the blackening was already in the water when um, Mother Ethel was traversing the forest. She already... Um, do I know if these coven heads were like the founding coven heads, or are they um, just the you, coven heads in general? Uh, you know they are the coven heads. Uh, you know that Mother Ethel is credited with founding the four coven, the 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 four covens of uh, that that form. You know, sort of the covenant. You know, so if she's the one who found, she these are probably people she brought together as, you know, as like you know we are the most powerful druids of the land. We shall rule this forest, or you know, something like that. Okay. However, so, however they happen to work. Uh, um, okay. It's just like you know, these are the pe- you know, you know the the she founded Mother Ethel founded the covens. Okay, so they're just gonna go off on the basis that like this happened well, like like early in Mother Ethel's career, and so these are the original heads of the covens. Okay, so um, Robin is going to say. Um, so the, the blackening had already gotten into the water, and so she worked with the coven heads to try and seal it, but, 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 it didn't work. Um, literally, the, the, the last scene that I saw was a hole in the ground where this, like, uh, waypoint was supposed to be, and just, just, like, like, a geyser of the blackening water just came out. And, you know, she said, well, it'll never be enough kind of thing. And so I think that the reason there's been such um, discontent between the Covens and Lion is probably because the Covens this whole time have been working to keep the blackening contained to the Kelchek forest, um, but has not really communicated this. Uh, to the rest of the island, so I think that's really where we need to go after this if we are going to attempt to learn more and uh, have any chance of, of stopping this crisis. Um, I'm still going to look through other things. Obviously, I've only checked Calcheck. I haven't checked Waterways or Line, um, but I think this is a, just an incredible breakthrough in our research. And then it's going to, like, ch- like make eye contact and check with you guys that you have followed them through this, like, entire rant. <laughs> I'm just going to stop and, like, just go, so the blackening's always been here? And just reiterate the one point. <laughs> the yes. witches. We got to go to the witches. Yes. I guess that is a succinct way of putting it. Also, where's Torin? We need to talk to John John. Uh, uh, I think we accidentally left him at the church. He is a cleric. Oh, um, yeah, I forgot. He was communing with his god right before we... Uh, oh, okay, that makes sense. You can but, you know, we can find him. Mean way you want. He's going to appear next session. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as long as we get out of the archives, uh, it'll be fine. It'll make cohesive sense in the storyline. Um, but that, we don't need to focus on that right now. We need to focus on the information that we've got. we got this... We don't need Torin's help to control the chaos that is all of us and complete this mission. And as Robin talks, they're just more aware that they actually do need Torin there. Touch the crystal. No! Also, Robin, would you mind helping me look for kobolds? I, uh, I messed up. And I'll look at the, <laughs> the stack of fallen books. Yeah, Robin yeah, just is all going been, like, to look towards the... 
absolute mess. And just good. a disgruntled intern has entered and just slowly <laughs> stacking the books on the cart. Some poor grad student who's working there to get through school. Yep. Um, Rock Child, I will help you after we complete the mission of research that we were given and being paid to do. But I don't know how well that's going to go. Hmm. <laughs> so it's like, I promise you tentatively, but we need to get other stuff done first. I want to go for religion. Okay, yep. All and right. then I will go with um, waterways after this, after All he right. does religion. All right. And I want to try for kobolds again, if that's okay. All right, you can try for kobolds again. All right. So first roll is Garrett. Two. Two? Is that a one? Is that a nat one turning into a two? No, it's a two. It's just a straight two. Zero, yeah, I get plus zero to intelligence. All right, you can't find uh, after the crash. Like the system just doesn't seem to go back the way it should, and you just get lost wandering the stacks trying to find your way around. Uh, you do not even you do not find anything on religion. You know it's in here. You just can't find any of it. I can't find religion. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. History to look and at waterways. Water systems. All right. Waterways, water systems. You know. What I mean. So you are cutting through a lot of stuff here with uh, um, drainage, sewage, piping, fresh water, aqueducts, springs, wat wells. Um, all sorts of, you know, there, there's a myriad of systems that people use to get water on this island. You're able to just go, not what I need, not what I need. Um, you're looking for the natural rivers and other such things. You get into some of that, the rivers, the reservoirs. You spend, a, you know, another hour or so looking through it all. Um, until you find, uh, you find uh, something that is very in interesting, useful to you. Um, so it's a discussion of the moon and tides on Venzor. There is no moon of Venzor. However, Venzor still experiences periodic tides. Um, there are no waves, uh, which uh, require the moon's tug and pull to cause. However, a systematic survey of the Bay of Black has shown that its water level periodically, um, and for unknown reasons, dips and rises in approximately 16 hour intervals. These dips and rises are at times accompanied with increased flow from various well springs, such as those in the Ardine and others within the Kalchek Forest. Um, there is a note in there dissuading the rumor that if you cap a well, uh, you can cause it to burst like a rocket uh, after a period of several weeks. <laughs> this does not appear to be true. Uh, that's, Basically, uh, the water builds up, builds up, builds up, and then pressure. Rocket! Boom. <laughs> this does not appear to be what happens. Um, it that's theorized. not specific. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey. <laughs> It's like it theorizes that there is, in fact, um, uh, a connected res set of reservoirs under um, the island of Venzor uh, that share, at certain points, a sort of brackish waterway back into the the bay and the sea. That you know, basically, at least part of the freshwater system on Venzor is directly connected to the to the saltwater one. Uh, Rackish, you say. Yeah, you know, somewhere underground. Yep. In the secret tunnels. Secret uh, connected secret reservoir tunnels. under Venzor that shares what? Sorry, I'm like trying to it, type and keep so, up. So yeah, the reservoir uh, and a and the tu there's a series of tunnels and reservoirs under Venzor that connect at some point with the the sea, with the Bay of Black, with the surrounding, you know bit of ocean that this plane has um something is connect you know there's because when the bay of black rises the uh a number of well springs seem to 
increase their water table as well. Okay. Um, right, so you got it's a very that. connected system. Uh, and the two places that this happens uh, most clearly, um, uh, well, the three places are the Ardine, the Bay of Black, and Cal Checked. Because uh, you know, you're measuring the bay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, that is what you gather with that 21, uh, which is pretty useful. It's pretty clearly laying out like how these things work and the timetable they're on. Doesn't doesn't know where the tunnels are, but it does lay out the. You know, it theorizes the existence of tunnels. Uh, you know, it's the hollow Venzor theory. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was so collective uh, that I feel a little left out. I do things to hurt people, and hurt people I do. <laughs> but he does it in the most Cringe. creative ways. <laughs> okay. Um, just so took just... 1d4 psychic damage from that. <laughs> uh, Justin, uh, yeah. did you roll for Not cobalt yet. again? Yeah, just the How's a 10? Does a 10 do any better? Please give me something. So, just Justin, Rockchild is wandering through the various stacks, and um, you... Things have been put out of order in most of the kobold section, thanks to your previous antics. However... Um, something odd does catch your eye. Um, there's a bit of sort of white light emanating from like around the corner of one of the stacks. It's uh, very <coughs> brief. Mm -hmm. and shortly after that, you hear scraping of maybe claws, maybe metal against either stone or more metal and um, there is uh, a small figure sort of steps around the darkness just barely passing through your sight can I go talk to it can I go engage and see what it was sure do you, you fall you follow the mysterious figure yes sure. yes uh, after a few minutes of moot weaving between stacks you come to a series of tables and benches you know probably a designated reading area deep within you know was probably you know a good square mile of a of an archive oh man so i really wandered off <laughs> uh you know you've, you've only walked for a few minutes like you're not you know you didn't what you didn't spend 20 minutes walking to the other side of the entire building yeah um sitting uh Leaning, half leaning, half sitting on one of the tables, um, is a snub nosed, rhinoceros horned, gray skinned female kobold in heavy uh, armor, uh, the sigils on which have been burned out. Uh, there's a mace tied to her hip and a large teardrop shield that's almost too big for her, but not quite. Just sort of leaning against her side. She's just sitting there, like eating eating an olive off a sandwich. <laughs> uh, <sighs> so how can how should I approach this? Like, can I just kinda like quietly but not too secretively like walk out and go, uh, hello, um hi, how's it how's it going? She kind of turns and uh, looks at you, just sort of shrugs. You should know, he doesn't answer. It's his one redeeming quality. Wait, who doesn't answer? Oh, <laughs> no. She just sort of <laughs> finishes the August. Hmm. It was almost a good sandwich and just <laughs> lips it away and just sort of vanishes in a bit of arcane light. <laughs> just gonna... The uh well, one of the gods you offered you you offered to. I believe he calls himself she just sort of rolls her eyes. Eldris. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
Which, for better or worse, leaves me to pick up the call. Oh, are you are you his emissary? I was. Oh, no! <laughs> A long time ago. Lifetimes ago, uh, being honest. You seem... Not typical. What do you mean by that? We're young as gods go. That much is given, but... I don't know. You don't really feel like the usual partitioner of that madman. Well, I, I, I actually... Did you want again? I actually, I had a few questions. Um, trying to understand more. Um, well, I, I guess I'll just come out with it. I don't know much about the kobolds, but I do know my my family my people and i'll kind of like shudder at think like going back thinking about it like and just my people were were slaughtered by a horde of kobolds and they were some religious fanatics and i just i need to know more our our <laughs> And then I'll, like, start off asking questions before stopping myself. Like, are all kobolds? <laughs> and then I'll stop because I'm like, wait, no, I shouldn't ask that. <laughs> no one thing is all of a thing. She kind of gets, uh, seems a little withdrawn. She just, you know, like there's sort of, there's sort of like a moment where like she's just deciding what the hell she wants to say about this. Oh no. And she just sort of uh just sort of looks at you and goes Many peoples do many things, some for good, some for ill. But I have not heard of a kobold horde on the slaughter, not any sort of particular zealotry in almost a thousand years. Uh, not since before Tiamat. Wait, 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 wait. Now... I, I don't know if you want me to roll a history of this, but with Neskir being my my mentor, will, would I have heard stories of this. You can roll history or religion. Either way, it's a crapshoot for me, so I'm going to go for it. Go I'll for take it. a 16. Oh! I'll gladly take a 16. 16. As, as she moves, um, some of the cloth uh, on, like, over her armor, the colors, uh, which, you know, again, has the sigil burned out begins to ripple uh, a little bit, just, you know, from the natural movement. Um, and it's the same pattern of cloth uh, as this takes you back, right, almost immediately. Um, it's the same design, same, you know, like, sort of colored scheme as was on the banners that flew against your uh, your family. Uh, the emblem has been, you know, seared out, but it's, it's, it's very, very similar as, uh, as she moves and, uh, does begin to speak. You stand before Meritites, sainted goddess of oaths, antithesis and servant of the, uh, ascended god Eldris. It's first and most betrayed, or the first and most betrayed. <laughs> The, the crest, the, the sigil that was on your arm. Yeah, on, on her armor, yeah. <laughs> I, and I'll point to, like, the burnt-out point and, like, 
That sigil. Was that was that his? A millennia ago, once it was. Back then, he was different. Can I just, like, crumple to the ground when I realize she's wearing the uniform of my attackers? Yeah. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're one of them. You're one of them. You're one of them, kobolds. <laughs> Many things have happened. How old are you? I am. Oh God! I I hope I wrote this down somewhere. <laughs> I I'm I'm but twenty six years old. I I I'm not that old, but and I yet the war whose banner you fear was fought eleven hundred and six years ago. Eleven hundred and six years since the god elders fell into the pits of hell before Tiamat. Eleven hundred and six years. Of clawing my way back. Uh, uh, that's impossible. I, I, I only was in the Witchlight Carnival for maybe, maybe ten years. I, I mean, Neskier and I, we. Is he with you? No, I, I haven't seen him in, God, what feels like a lifetime ago. What else feels like a lifetime? Or more? I'm certain many things do. I, I know how horrifically curious you are. I... I, I don't... How am I alive? That is a rather strange question. She kind of leans in and uh, looks, you know, kind of like leans in and looks at you. Like, you know, there's, there, there's, there's almost, uh, you know, there, there's a bit of connection there. This is, you know, this is, you know, this is a very vigilant creature, but it is also, you know, like it seems to not really have any powerful intent. So it's kind just of, intrigued by me. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 quite intri it's intrigued by you, and it's just sort of you know it's it's very curious. Um, but it is the uh, it is the goddess of uh, it is the goddess of oaths. Oh. I don't know what you are. I don't know how you have stolen his old trick. Perhaps you haven't. I don't know. What old trick? Uh, what I can do. What I can't. And she sort of like turns her head and just sort of looks off to the side, like, you know, almost, almost like, you know, something's coming. Yeah. What I can do, what I will do, is I can't guarantee your quest for knowledge. I can't guarantee your help. I can't guarantee any help for you. But what I will do, because you are in service to the cruel, is enact what. I was meant to do and uphold the oaths of broken. So I will give you this secret. Do not trust to the servants of Malele. You have brought darkness into their house, and passion is fervent. As your family and mine all too well knew. Okay, you're gonna have to like break that down for me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not not just in game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like out of game. So alright, so she said I am the goddess of oaths. Yeah. I can't guarantee your quest for knowledge. But because you because you are in some sort of broken arrangement, insert something cruel. I will. She will do 
what she uh, is meant to do. Which is be the keeper of oaths. And so she is going to grant you a... So she's going to grant you some protection with a warning. This warning is do not trust to the servants of Malele. For you have brought a darkness into their house. And passion is fervent. Because Malele is the goddess of passion. As both your family and mine well know. A reference to the kobolds that she presumably was with when your family was met with complete and utter zealous monstrosity. Mm -hmm. um, you may recall from last session that the warlock of Malele attempted and partially succeeded in curing you. Oh, so I shouldn't trust them that they're not yeah. best intentioned. Yeah. Well, she's saying don't trust them. You brought darkness into their house and they're very passionate. Oh, if they they've probably sensed the blackening in you. Oh, and are freaking out because you shared it with one of their warlocks. And now and now they are very and, and the goss of passion is very fervent. And you've seen what 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 divine fervor does to people. Oh, so geez. you committed an act of heresy. Congratulations. Yay. Yeah. Well, and Mer Meritites, um, are, are kobolds still to be feared? Are they still ruthless and warmongering as I look at the maze? <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, she, she sort of just, you know, looks back from, like, whatever hall she's staring down, seeing whatever she's seeing. Like he goes, we never were. We had something. He gave us something. That we didn't have in a long, long time. Hope. But all he asked in return was undying loyalty. <laughs> God, you make him sound like such a horrible leader. <laughs> Gee, maybe because was he, he was. Not? And in the end, that loyalty was betrayed. Oh. I'm a god forged in the depths of the nine hells. <laughs> Darkest of the sainted, and yet the least cruel. Whoa. That's a bombshell. That, that's that, intense. That, that, is, that is what, that is how, uh, that is how Meritides considers herself. <laughs> Compared to some of the others around her, she's got something of a point. <laughs> wow, so they've become the least cruel of the Ascendant. That's interesting. Well, no, no. She's the least cruel of the Sainted. Okay. Yeah. Of, of all this, she, <laughs> she, is the only, she is the only god in the entire pantheon born in the Nine Hells. Mm. However, of the Sainted, she is the least cruel. Well, yeah, she has to contend with Eldris. Now, can I make an oath to her? And I don't know what I'd make the oath of, though. <coughs> does she, like, does she have any stakes in our journey? Well, uh, the Black of Anine does destroy everything. So. Like, I, I make it my oath that we will try and find a, a fix for this curse upon me. I don't know how much of that's an oath to her. Yeah, I don't know. I because I, you're thinking... like uh, this curse upon me is a little bit self-centered, but to say that you yeah. like make an oath to purge this darkness from Venzor, uh, so that no one else has to um, that's also suffer just the a touch. big oath, and I feel like it might trigger her. <laughs> Remember last time someone made a big promise to her? She got <laughs> damned to hell. I don't want to make that mistake twice. Well, we're already on the journey. We've already, like, told people we're going to attempt this. Um, you can make a heartfelt, like, oath that you will, you will do everything within your capabilities. To prevent uh, it from to... spreading to more innocent yeah. souls. 
Yeah, to to purge this land of the darkness uh, so that no one else may suffer the touch of the We will try to fix what death. people have failed before us. Because, like, if she's, a... if she's one of the, like, nicest and kindest, I definitely would want her as an ally. She said least cruel. Okay, and I feel like, like those are two different things, but go ahead. Least cruel to me sounds like friendly. Yeah. Plus, yeah. she's already uh, answered my question. I know Eldris's fucking horde yeah. killed my family, so now I gotta kill him. Yeah. Uh, keep, <laughs> in mind, keep in mind, she is competing with the god of vengeance, the god of beasts, the goddess of secrets, the goddess of passion, the god of exchange, the goddess of competition. <laughs> I feel like the yeah. goddess of competition and exchange have a have like competing marketplaces, like all the mattress firms. <laughs> One's the athletes, the others the people betting. <laughs> oh no! There you go. Well, um, Maritides, I, I I truly am appreciative of you responding to my call, even if um, even if the ascendant could not find the time. Since she managed, since she opened with saying that he couldn't be bothered. Yeah, he never answers, dear. Yeah. Well, yeah. since he, he this did is not one redeem, This is one redeeming quality. <laughs> <laughs> I love when she said that because I was like, I agree. <laughs> hey, now, there's some good things he did. Not many, but some. Listen, I. I have so much pent up frustration <laughs> from Eldris. The antithesis to my being. It was um, literally the antithesis. <laughs> yes. The the amount of times that I was just so incredibly frustrated. Uh, I'm having war flashbacks. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's fine. Um, really quick, though, since it is 10, um, can I do... Uh, a check for um, line in the archives before we leave. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can do a check for line in the archives, sure. It will do, uh, we will do <laughs> no! nine. Unfortunately, the city of line consists once again of simple ledgers, uh, the opening of the mine, the logging rights, the cost of shipments quest for, you know, very dealing with various small-time banditry, uh, census reports, it's just the dullest, most useless stuff ever. As, you know, this is, you gather, you know, at least a mile-large complex designed to house all the records of this highly bureaucratic system for the last two and a half centuries. Weirdly <laughs> enough, one of the documents you find is a complaint about the quality of copper received during a transaction. Ah, <laughs> oh, I was doing so well. God damn it! <laughs> I do like that nine rhymes with line, though. I got a nine. For yeah, line. Like got nine for line. Yeah, nine for line. Yeah. When I'm eating my lime skittles. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, well, I will um make a well. They're doing other stuff. Um, or searching or wandering. I'm going to make a comprehensive uh list and summary of what we found well at the archives um a quite detailed one um referencing the documents that i found um with their with their title and number and where they uh, the shelf that i got them and then referencing yeah. the crystal <laughs> like very detailed researchy report that you would expect from someone yeah. of Robin's background. Yeah, you can take uh, you, you can take your time doing that, and if uh, if you guys want, we can wrap there because we have been playing for almost two hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is okay. uh, that is gonna be it, Internet people. Uh, welcome to the research episode. Um, I feel like you know I feel like discussing the name before we jump off here. You know, just because I feel like it'd be a fun thing to do for people who watch. Uh, maybe some of the comments will have good names. So. I'm thinking for tonight's episode, it might be fun to call it Robin and the Crystal of Memory. Oh, no. Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da. 
Make Justin cry for his profession. Every night I hate it. I... My career is in ruins. What do you mean? I uh, I like that, but I do like that we've had um, quite a bit of alliteration in the past. Mm -hmm. So yep. something like, um, I don't know, something to do with like... Archives, research. accidents, ascended. Like, comma, comma, comma. <laughs> oh, I like that one. We were in the archives. I was going to do like, like Robin's research or recollections and research or something like that. But I like that one. <laughs> Although, wait, I want to do a Top Gear. I want to do a Top Gear reference. Tonight on D&D &D Gear, Robin Goat becomes tall, Rock meets a god, and Gareth discovers heresy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a good impression. Uh, I'm gonna end the stream there. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see what happens. But